But if it's scored, you'll see a bunch of vertical scratches in it. If you let this bearing go bad and it all falls apart, oh my, your chainsaw will thank you for that. My still MS250 died and I ordered a new coil for it, ignition coil, but I went over to a friend of mine's and he let me use his saw in the meantime and he said he found this in the garbage. He said if you want you can have it and see if you can get it going. So we'll do that. The first thing I'm going to do is just see if it's worth cleaning it up and moving forward. So I'm going to check and make sure there's compression and that the piston's not locked up. Oh, it's got good compression. It's strong. There's one other thing that we want to check on a two-cycle engine to determine if this is worth repairing or if you're out looking to purchase one. And that is to see if the piston and cylinder wall is scored. All we need to do is remove the screws that hold the muffler on and then we can observe the piston. All right, with the muffler off, we can check the cylinder wall and the piston. And if it's scored, there's the cylinder wall and it looks clean, looks great. But if it's scored, you'll see a bunch of vertical scratches in it. That can happen from not running the right two cycle oil mix or none at all. Some people do that, pour straight gas in there. It'll overheat and burn up your piston and score it. Now let's look at the piston. I'm just pulling on the recoil, the pull cord. And there's the top edge of the piston, the rings. And that looks great. Just like new, no scratches in that at all. So we'll go ahead and keep moving forward on this. Also, while I've got this off, you can probably see through there. That's the spark arrestor. It's basically just a screen over the exhaust and that's nice and clean. So we don't need to clean that. That won't be a problem. You can have throttle problems, starting problems, if those are clogged. That looks good. Before I start working on this thing, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. This purple power, I don't leave it on stuff long because it kind of burns, but for cutting through grease and stuff and then pressure washing something or hosing it off, it works really good. So I'm gonna clean this up real quick and we'll take it apart and see what we can do. Now I've never pressure washed a chainsaw, and I don't recommend doing this, but I'm going to stay away from the carburetor, which is there, and I'm going to stay away from the muffler. I don't want to shoot water in there. So I'm going to clean around those, and then take it apart. If I wasn't taking it apart, I wouldn't do this. But then we'll take it apart and see what we got. <laughs> all right, good enough. I'm going to take it apart anyways and clean it all up so I can't even move the chain. It's so sticky and gummy in there. So let's take it in on the workbench and see what we got. We're looking pretty good cosmetically now, but I need to get rid of that gas. I have no idea how old the gas is, what kind of condition it's in. Oh. Look at that. It's like tar in there. That's why you don't leave gas in your machine when you're not using it. That's definitely got to come out of there. Looks like tea. <laughs> Not good. And it smells bad. Doesn't smell like gas. Look at that in the tank. Ah, yay, yay, yay. I'm going to spray a little carb cleaner in there. Oh, my. Look at that.
I can feel down in there. There is like tar in there. Now, of course, most of you know this is a two cycle engine, so you have to mix oil and gas. But just to clean that out, I'm going to put some straight gas in there and try to get that tar out of there. I'd like to get this big chunk out of here. Oh, I had it. That's some sooty stuff. This rubber gasket's all shot too. The fuel line is all but dissolved in there. So there's no fuel filter in there. Mercy, that's dirty stuff. I don't know if you can see in there. But that's the end of the fuel line. It's just hanging there, and it just got all eaten up. Maybe that's part of what's gummy in there. But that's why you don't leave gas in a machine for a long period of time. Bad stuff. So I'll have to order a fuel line before we can go any further here as far as getting it started. But I can check for spark. Just put the plug wire back on. Set wire is okay. I'm going to touch it to the head there and it should get spark. You have to, to check for spark, you have to ground that. So touch it to the metal. I'm going to turn the lights off. Oh, yeah. Good sign. So here's what I'm going to do. Since we've got spark, I know I got a problem with the fuel and the fuel line. I'm going to pull the carburetor off, clean the carburetor because it's probably gummed up just like the tank was, order a fuel line, and we'll put it back together and that might be all it needs. Now on this particular still model, the O26, this, of course the throttle's all spring-loaded. You want to turn this to the off position. Otherwise, when you pull this cover off, it's going to go flying and the parts are going to fly everywhere. So I'm going to hold this down here and pull this off. Now with this released, we can pull our carburetor out. I also want to show you the carburetor. It's filthy, filthy dirty. So we definitely need to clean that. See if you can see in there. I don't know if you can see all that gunk in there. But that's got to come off and be cleaned. Now I'm going to release the fuel line. Pop that off right back here. And then pull the carburetor off. There, got the fuel line off. Now we can pull this dirty bad boy out. Alright, let's take this carburetor apart and clean it up and get ourselves a fuel line here. Pull the fuel line out. Ah, that's what's left of the fuel line. That rubber is like tar. That's what's sitting in the tank. Now we can set this aside. Let's take this carburetor apart and clean it up. Boy, there's a lot of soot in there. I think I'm going to blow that out first.
Good. Now, we just have to wait for this and the filter. The new parts came in. I can't believe this. From eBay, I know I needed the fuel line and the fuel filter, which is here and here. Fuel filter, I needed an air filter. The old air filter was completely gutted out, rotted out, deteriorated. So we got a new one there. I got all this stuff for $12.99. Which included, and I don't need right now, because we just cleaned it, but included a carburetor, a Walboro, Walboro carburetor. I just cleaned the old one, but I've got a spare there. Got oil lines, fuel lines. That's the fuel line we needed. Fuel filter, or the air filter. Even threw in a spark plug. Oil filter. Fuel filter, couple gaskets, $12.99 on eBay. I can't believe it. Let's get back to the chainsaw and see if we can get this going. Uh, one thing I did is I put paint thinner mineral spirits in here because all the gumminess in the fuel tank, the gas wouldn't break that down. I've been letting this soak in here while I'm waiting for parts. And it's cleaned up pretty good. Ooh. I guess I better flush that again. That's nasty in there. Alright, after a lot of scraping and scrubbing and dabbing, I think I've got it pretty good. I'm going to give it a final rinse. And I might have to keep an eye on this and change filters couple times, but I've got it about as good as I can. Looks pretty good in there. Compared to what it was. Let's soak the chain in gas and clean up the bar. The sprocket on the end of the bar is pretty sticky. So I'm going to soak that tip. I'm going to throw it right in here in our solution of gas and there's a little mineral spirits in there and that should free that up all right let's see if we can get this fuel line in now maybe a little oil on the line too so that'll pop in See that squared off side there? Goes over there. Press this in. Actually, I'm going to go from the bottom side and pull on the top side and push. There we go. Yeah, she's in there snug now. Beautiful. I don't know if you could do that without the hemostat. Okay, now I gotta get the filter on. There we are. Oh, you don't need the hemostat. Slide that in there, beautiful. Drop that back in. And I got the flat edge over here so I can get the carburetor plugged in there. All right, before we slide the carburetor in, I want to show you how the linkage for the throttle works. I'm going to put the carburetor in. It goes in like this. Then I'm going to feed this in. So I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. And I'm going to slide this in just like that. Alright, 
fuel line out of the way. Got the wires from the coil and the kill switch over here. I gotta get those out of the way so I can slide this in. There we go. Just so you can see, I'm just plugging the fuel line right in there. Sorry, my hands are in the way, but you know where that goes. There we go. Okay, now I'll put the gasket on. And the nuts holding the carburetor in place. Don't want to go crazy with all this. Just so it's snug, no air leaking. Good. Now our throttle linkage, just like I showed you. And I'm just going to take a screwdriver, put it in there and pry this out just a little bit. So I can get that in there. Good. See that? Well, that slides right in there. Working our throttle. Beautiful. Now, got to pull this spring down and it sits right in this groove. Just like that. And then that sits right in there. Gotta keep that together there. This is a little safety so you have to hold that down to pull the trigger. And this hook just goes right up here in front. It slides in there. Make sure that your throttle linkage is in there. There you go. All right. And then this screw just goes in the bottom here. And this is just plastic, so make sure you get it in straight. There we go. Good. Screw that down. Okay, 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 okay. I already put some fuel in it. So, guess we can give it some pulls and see if it'll start. All right, let's see if she'll fire up. Let's put the bar and chain back on. Carburetor obviously needs to be adjusted. It's idling too high, but so far so good. Since this thing was so gummed up, one other thing that I'd like to do is check and lubricate the bearing for the clutch. And you just take a screwdriver, pop this little C-clip out like that. Set that aside. Pull the washer collar off. Pull the gear off. Set that aside. Pull the clutch housing out. And here's our bearing right here. This little rascal. It's good. Keep that lubricated. This is your crankshaft here. If you let this bearing go bad and it all falls apart, you can mess up your crankshaft, which means you got to buy some major parts for the engine. It's a little dirty and gummy in there too. It's a little greasy, it shouldn't be. 
for the clutch. That's not good. Take a little carb cleaner just to break the grease down. Wipe that out. There we go. Nice and clean. I've got this silicone grease that I like to use. It doesn't attract dirt like regular grease and get all gummy. We can take this and this doesn't look bad at all. These bearings are fine. It's not dirty. But you can clean that with gas. If it was dirty, this one's fine. I'm just going to take and put a little grease on my finger and the bearing and you just press it in. Go around and press it in. You'd be happy you did this. And it just takes five to ten minutes to do it. Your chainsaw, thank you for that. Now we can throw it back together. Beautiful. And we just press this C-clip back on. Use needle nose pliers or whatever. Just press it back in. There you go. Popped in. Just like new, just like new. By the way, I took this plate off. I'll show you real quick. I just took this plate off. That's where the oil, the bar chain oil comes out. And then it feeds through here and it goes on the chain. I just blew this out. I didn't know if it was all gummed up or dirty or whatever. So, but everything's fine, nice and clean. Actually, this screw was loose, so I'm glad that I checked it. Snug that down real well. Good. On your chainsaw, the bar and chain oil comes through this little weep hole back in behind this plate, runs out the plate, and then into this hole on your bar, which then runs in to the channel of the bar. That's what lubricates your chain and also the bearings for the end guide on your bar. Very important to keep that lubricated. If that gets clogged up, you're going to burn up your bar and your chain. And to clean that out, I just take a little flathead screwdriver Start at the tip end. You don't want to push all the dirt into the tip and clog up these bearings anymore. And just run it down the channel that the chain runs in and get all the gunk out of there. You also want to clean that tip out. You can take a little piece of wire if it's clogged up bad and just push that through. And then clean out the guide. Do the same thing on the other side. And that weep hole. And if you have compressor, compressed air, this isn't critical, but I like to blow it out. I blow out the guide. And you, there's one on each side. And of course the guide on the other side. So that's nice and clean. That'll save you from burning up your bar, burning up your chain, it'll keep it all lubricated. And these things are about 80 bucks and a chain's maybe 30 bucks. You'll be happy you did it and it just takes a minute. And now we just put the bar and chain back on. There we go. And there we go in our cover. Normally I wouldn't tip it up like this, but I'm doing it so you can see. And you just want to, it's best to have it sitting down the way it's supposed to be. You just kind of snug these down and then back them off and adjust the chain. 
And you can see this chain's way too loose. So I'm gonna set it down, back these off just a touch. It's just this middle screw right here. You turn clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to loosen. You can see this is too loose. So I'm gonna turn it clockwise, tighten that up. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose where it'll pop off the bar. That's pretty good right there. The other thing, when you tighten this, you want to pull up on the bar and push down on this. So I just put my, rest my arm on there on the brake and pull up on the bar and then tighten it down. That's all there is to it. Very, very simple. That blade is nice and sharp.